Yeah, the news is back. The news is back. The water wave, Minnesota news is back. Did it? I have to use that as the intro. Shit was kind of hard. Welcome guys back to another Water Wave Minnesota News episode. I know it's been a long time, but there's a lot of stuff we have to talk about. We got Dem Atlas coming out about his Rhyme Sayers news and what he was, all of the alleg, uh, allegations about his name. Uh, Lost and Leon posted a crazy snippet we're going to talk about. There's a lot of cool shows coming up at First Ave. Um, Prof is going on tour. Mr. Organic interview. Dinky Town stuff, stuff about shoes and phenom and some other stuff we got to talk about. You just got to watch the whole video. All right. First thing in the news that I would like to talk about, probably the biggest news. I'm just going to start off with it. Usually you should probably throw it at the end, but I'm nice to my viewers. I'm going to talk about it right away. Dem Atlas, an artist from Minnesota. I assume he's born and raised in Minnesota. I guess I don't I don't have the scoop on his full belongings and where he's from but he's an artist in minnesota he signed to rhyme sayers the label um you know he's done a lot of cool things he's dropped a lot of videos a lot of music with rhyme sayers he's performed at the timberwolves games was having a very great career until about a year ago um his ex-girlfriend came out saying that he was um basically beating her up hurting her uh just basically a really he's claiming he's a really toxic man in a very hurtful way um and when that surfaced on social media, Rhyme Sayers um, took the initiative to say that we don't support that type of stuff and basically publicly dropped him from the label. Um, and that was kind of like the end of it. Like Dem Atlas was being very quiet about it for the longest amount of time, wasn't really talking about it. Um, but today or yesterday, he dropped a video um, basically explaining his whole perception, his side of the story, explaining what really went on. And um, basically, he he's claiming that he was getting an argument with this girl in the back of Uber, blah, blah, blah. Um, you got to watch the whole video. I'll put a, There'll be a clip on the screen after this um, just to show a little piece of it. But basically, he was claiming that his girl um, slipped and fell. And that's how, like, the actual incident, like, when she got hurt, like, that that was how it got hurt. She, he didn't actually hurt her. You have to watch the whole video. He explains it very well. But one key point that I um, heard in there was that Rhyme Sayers never actually dropped him from the label. They just publicly said that they don't do that type of stuff, or don't um, what's a, or don't um, agree with that type of behavior. So that that was kind of weird. And uh, he said that him and his attorney or his lawyers have been trying to get out of, out of the contract with Rhyme Sayers for basically this past whole year. And Rhyme Sayers hasn't been contacting them back and just, I don't know, it seems like they don't let him out of his contract, but they're trying to say that they're not signing him anymore. They're not a part, he's not a part of Rhyme Sayers anymore, which is pretty weird. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't let him leave the contract if that's something that they're concerned about. Um, but it's definitely something to stay tuned about and to keep an ear open to see what happens after that. Thank you, Dem Atlas, for coming out and speaking your voice. Um, I'm sure we'll hear more about um, what the real truth is and what's really going on soon. And, uh, want to talk about that photo I also want to discuss the uh, relationship between Rhyme Sayers and myself last year around this time um, Rhyme Sayers made the decision to publicly release me from the label but uh, I'm here to tell you today that I'm technically still signed with them um, it's been going on for a year and uh, my attorney and myself have tried numerous times to get a hold of them, to bring them to the table, to finalize a separation agreement. Um, but they haven't been getting back to us. We've tried for numerous times to, to, to end things professionally and um, they missed every deadline. So now I'm talking to you. Uh, it's been hard. It's been frustrating. Um, I've been dealing with um, just depression and, uh, and grief and anger and, uh, and, and just sadness, really. 
there's been a lot of things that have been said about me. There's been a lot of misinformation and there's just been a lot of lies. And I just wanna bring some light to the dark and, and, and tell you my truth. Um, there's been accusations of sexual mis misconduct and, uh, and abuse. And they're simply not true. I have never forced a woman to do anything with me. I have never raped anyone. And I never abused anyone. The next thing I want to talk about is Lost in Lyon. Um, he posted uh, a snippet with a music video he has coming with K-Camp. Um, if you don't know Lost in Lyon, I did an interview with him not too long ago. So you could... Um, uh, listen to that or go watch that on our YouTube page um, but yeah he there was no sound in the video at least for some reason I couldn't hear the sound maybe he just had it disabled but yeah he's got a song music video coming with K Camp it should be pretty dope it's always dope to see Minnesota music artists uh, reaching out and working with a lot of bigger names around the around the country next thing I want to talk about is the first Av shows um, we have a show at first Ave 7th Street entry on August 4th Jake Giller is headlining um, the supporting acts is Kelvino Tracing Green Wilson Minneapolis Drew, Ominous Monster, and Tony Dent. That is August 4th. Make sure you get your tickets. They're only $10. And then on August 13th, I believe August 13th, sorry if the date's wrong, I'll put the flyer on the screen just in case I'm wrong, but Mac Irv is performing at uh, uh, 7th Street, or 1st Ave, 7th Street entry as well, and Tay Supreme, uh, Prince, uh, Mac, Mac Irv, Tay Supreme, and Mac Turner, and there might be a couple other ones. Um, it'll be on the screen so that you can see exactly all of it. But those are two dope shows that are both that first half that are in August. So pop out to those. On the topic of shows, Prof, um, another Minnesota music artist who has been going crazy every year. He's always known for his tours and his shows, his his stops and his shows are is really where he makes his money. Like I mean, I don't know exactly. Like I don't mean make his money like physical currency, but like where he gets his his name, his brand buzzing is his shows. His shows are always sold out or at least packed and he puts on a good show you know he interacts with the crowd very well um he's making stops in rochester minnesota sioux falls south dakota fargo north dakota fort collins colorado and denver colorado um and that's just as you know it's probably his first tour of the summer like i'm sure he oh and the the one in denver is where he's opening for the baby at a festival that'll be really dope that's super cool um, I'm sure he's going to have a lot more shows throughout the summer, but that's just a cool start for him to kick off um, back going on tour. So congrats, Prof and Stop House. Salute you guys. The next thing I'll talk about is Mr. Organic, the king of downtown. The man himself, one of them once, three Bs. You know who I'm talking about. If you don't know who I'm talking about, just figure it out. The guy with the, the dyed beard, the cool cars, all that, you know. Iced out jewelry, living lavish, you know. Three of them. Mr. Organic. He did an interview with Adam-22 at No Jumper. I've been waiting for that. I felt like it needed to happen, and Adam-22 noticed him when he went on um, a podcast. I forget what it was, but it's the one where they, like, talk about girls and stuff, and they, I don't I don't even know. I don't know exactly what they do on there. But Mr. Organic was on there, and that's how Adam-22 heard of him. And I'm glad he went on it. It's great, for Minnesota, it's great for the Minnesota scene just to get another person in a good limelight for people i don't know if it's dropped yet i'm definitely gonna listen to it as soon as it drops it, it might have already but by the time you're watching this it probably has dropped so go check that out if not stay tuned for it um i'm sure they had some cool conversations i seen he was in his whole gold fit looking like a king out there that shit was fire but mr organic shout out to you um shout out no jumper i need my interviews so as soon as i pop out there let me know the next thing i want to talk about involves the sneaker community um and this is all just um rumors and allegations and whatnot i don't know any truth to all of this but a sneaker store in dinky town minneapolis they have a few locations but the only one i've ever been to and really have heard of is uh the dinky town location which is their newest location is um phenom phenom global i believe is their full name but phenom the shoe store um they're getting um there's a lot of rumors spreading around saying that they backdoor pairs. If you don't know what backdooring your shoes are, it's basically like when the store buys it from Nike or whatever, 
um, instead of actually selling them in store, they'll sell them to like websites like StockX directly and make their money that way rather than releasing them as they're supposed to to the public. Or they'll sell them to, you know, their friends through like w- w- before release day or, on, or, you know, before on release day, but without actually giving it a fair chance to everybody, um, which is uh, which is kind of sucks. You know, like you hope that like like online, all the sneaker websites, you can't buy shoes because it's all robots buying them. People are just paying for bots. So it's like the only real chance you get is to like try to get them in person. So the fact that like a lot of stores out here, like there's a lot of rumors. And I mean, there's pretty good proof of a lot of stores out here that do this stuff. Um, I'm not saying Phenom is one that has definitive proof, but there's a lot of stores out here that that they just they sell, they give them to their employees or they sell them to their friends or they sell them straight to websites. But, um, but yeah, that's just something I wanted to bring up. Hopefully Phenom isn't doing it. If you are doing it, I hope they stop. You know, you're supposed to be out here for the Minneapolis sneaker community, not selling to websites, not giving it to people that are just going to go make more money. I know I know, I own a resale store, but I want the same fair chance everyone else has of buy, being able to buy a shoe, whether it's going on my feet or it's going for me to try to make a living. So I hope they keep it fair game for everybody. The next thing I want to talk about is a rapper, J. Dot, from St. Paul, Minnesota. Rest in peace to him. He was shot and killed about a week ago, if not two weeks ago. Um, he had an album that was planned to drop, and he never and he he wasn't being, he wasn't alive to be able to see his album drop and to be able to live through it. But his album did still release. Um, it dropped today. So all of you that are listening, go stream J. Dot's new album, J. Dot. Pain made me famous. Go stream his new album, Pain Made Me Famous by J dot J D O T T. He's super talented. I wish I could have got to know him more. Um but yeah. Just rest in peace to J dot. Go stream his album. And I hope, you know, there's a lot of people are getting shot and killed out here. I hope it slows down. I know it's it's something that's super hard to avoid and it's a bigger it's a bigger issue than you really even know. But I hope it just slows down. Rest in peace to J dot. The last thing I want to talk about um, if any of you are from Dinkytown, Minneapolis, or have ever gone through Dinkytown, Minneapolis on the College of the University of Minnesota, you would know that there was a historic McDonald's there. It was probably, like, the one sh- spot that was, like, iconic in Dinkytown. There's probably a few, but that was one of the most iconic buildings in Dinkytown. Um, today, or yesterday, actually, rather, they tore it down, tore the building down, like, the crane just completely tore down it's been shut down for like six months or a year i don't even it's been shut down for a long time but it officially got destroyed and so i don't know what they're gonna i don't i don't know what they're gonna build next so any of you guys know what is going to be built next in that spot comment it down below if you have any a, a suggestion excuse me of what should go there comment it down below i'm trying to know because i think i don't i think they're gonna build apartments there could be wrong but it'd be cool if they I don't know if they maybe I don't even eat McDonald's, but if they put like a McDonald's on the bottom floor and then it was a super tall apartment or something like that, I don't think I'd want to live in that apartment. I just want to smell like McDonald's all day. But but yeah, that's all I got today. Thank you guys for tuning in to Water Wave Minnesota News. We are back. I'm gonna try to do this every week. I always say that with a lot of things, but I'm a busy man. Um, but as long as I have the free time and the stuff to talk about, I will sit down in front of this camera. And I will edit these videos for you guys. Make sure you subscribe. Put your notifications on. We're almost at 10K subscribers. Come by our store, 1521 Como Avenue Southeast. You can buy vintage shoes, drip, record music. we got a recording studio, waterwavetv.com, to book your sessions with that. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Peace out. I'm on that 2012 YOLO shit. These flows cold like some ice cream froyo shit. And when I pull up to the scene, they get to snapping and flicks. I gotta get to know Lil Shorty before I wipe that chick. I write my shit. Bars hit it like a blunt, bro. Can you like that shit? For real. Hit the city like a natural disaster. I never sip on